Jason Todd died twice. Two times he died officially. The first time is in 1988 when people voted, fans voted on the phone whether they wanted to keep him alive or dead after what happened with the Joker. Fans voted to kill him. He died. The next time was at the end of the Under the Red Hood arc when he was making Bruce make this ultimate choice whether he should kill the Joker or spare him and it turns out he said oh no I'm not gonna do it and so he rigged the place to blow up. Jason supposedly died these two times. He wasn't supposed to come back to do the Under the Red Hood arc and he certainly wasn't supposed to come back again after dying at the end of that arc. He also wasn't supposed to make so many people on r slash Red Hood and Tumblr and AO3, YouTube and just people that are just regularly buying the comments. He wasn't supposed to make those people, myself included, obsess over him and think about his every move. But he did and I don't even think DC knows why. So I decided to figure it out myself. I decided to think of some characteristics, the main characteristics of Jason Todd that makes him the accidental masterpiece that he is. And I'm going to be relying on canon sources and well accepted fanon for this. So strap tight and um yeah. If you have any time check out my description there should be something fun down there for you to do. Why is Jason Todd so great? Why is he a fan favourite? I mean look online you can see I'm telling you I love the guy and evidently DC isn't even sure what to do with him themselves. They want to keep him, they want to discard him, it's, it's this whole mess. They've killed him twice in main canon and yet they brought him back. Well it's because he adds so much to the DCU and Batman stories specifically and there are three main things he adds, three main characteristics he adds that I could come up with. Starting with his versatility as a fighter. It might be unintentional with the way that they wrote him but Jason has so many unique and different sources of training, so many teachers that he has studied under along the years as a character. Starting with the streets, I know that in the original he was what a circus guy. Then post crisis he was mostly the sad homeless boy who jacked Batman's tires. He is an someone who was rich. He was somebody who struggled, especially in the current canon. That main backstory of his is the streets. It's not having a lot for yourself and not having enough to survive unless you actually go out of your way to make it. And that taught Jason from a young age to fight with scraps and pieces of anything he could find to be desperate. And then he was taken in by Bruce Wayne. Evidently, Bruce Wayne is a mastermind of martial arts why I love the guy, why he's, you know, favourite superhero. Uh, and he has a lot of training and he's also had experience at this point with teaching another fellow young hero. Like, okay, he's had Dick Grayson, he has Barbara Gordon, and I think there might be some other few people between there where he might have been training them, I don't know. There's probably some side stories in, what, 1987 or whatever. I, that was too close to Jason's death date. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that he's trained. And so he knows how to teach. This is where Jason's, we're starting to first see where Jason's getting versatile, Jason's learning. Uh, I think there was a storyline where he had been in the boarding school run by that old crusty woman who's a little dickhead and she also would have taught him how to fight but still I think it would still be quite rugged techniques and so this would be his rugged attitude that he would be taking from the streets and maybe the boarding school and putting it into martial arts putting it into breathing techniques. I think it's well accepted fanon that Jason doesn't have the most patience in terms of fighting and stuff like that so he uses a lot of his more passionate emotions drive himself and I think that's just a good way of assessing his character when he wasn't just the dick clone just another circus boy when he actually came from the streets he had that grit he had that background and I think that that would serve him well in his martial arts it would make him more of a uh, I'm gonna use these as a tool to exert myself rather than Bruce's I'm gonna use these as a tool to follow the mission kind of vibe and then of course Jason he died and then he was underground he came back superboy what punched the universe i don't know call it cap if you want i literally whatever he came back for some magical reason and now jason's source of training is either Ra's al ghul you know or the talia al ghul more so the league of assassins man's learning how to be an assassin the all cast or whatever happened in lost days i think that was the league of assassins as well so yeah league of assassins very violent very heavy on the killing very heavy on 
on the using and manipulating people's weaknesses and then we also have the all cast which is supposed to be this kind of magical swords esque group of people who train the mind and stuff like that so if we're going off of everything that i know for now jason's training was those four different ways of learning he's versatile is what i'm trying to say and this versatility means that he's a master of weaponry it means that he is able to wield practically any tool that he has on him to fight and that is a product of uh, the grit i mean he could use bottles i'm sure he would be able to use butter knives he would be able to think of anything to use and then the training in the martial arts his body he would be using his body utilizing that hand to hand then we're talking about the league of assassins where he learned how to use swords and daggers much more efficiently probably bows and arrows i believe he learned how to use some guns there as well or just by himself along that time of becoming the red hood so he knows how to use guns as well he's an amazing marksman and then we have the all cast bit, bit of magic and stuff which uh some people might utilize in their fan and some people don't i don't know how canon it is i i know that the whole lazarus pit side effects of the mind is canon but it's exaggerated in fanon uh so i don't know how much you want to go across oh he has a magic boost of like energy because of the lazarus pit or because of the all cast regardless he has some touch with magic kind of like diana has some touch with magic and that is very useful and last but not least the last thing that really makes him a versatile fighter is his approaches so we're not just talking about how he learned about his fighting skills and the sources that he had but also his application his techniques in the field and how he will infiltrate gangs one day how he will kill people another day be a classic hero they could also just suggest that jason is a very 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 versatile fighter with very different approaches to different problems but the thing is as i mentioned kind of alluded to there are other versatile fighters in dc there are a lot of versatile fighters in dc i mean even let's use superman as an example i thought the guy was just an overpowered guy i thought he was just what he just flies <laughs> he's very smart apparently he's very intelligent i mean to do the things he does he's unintentionally intelligent it's kind of like eve adam eve if you guys have watched invincible no spoilers to do what she needs to do you you actually have to realize how smart they have to be for superman to be able to x-ray into things and understand what's going on he has to have an understanding of biology for superman to know how much to punch into something to get someone out without killing them especially if they're like a vulnerable human obviously he has to have a lot of knowledge about physics and there are countless other people in dc who are versatile in that way they're not just punchy strong people they have loads of different skills to be versatile fighters and so even though jason is very versatile i'm calling him an accidental masterpiece it's a very strong statement he's a versatile fighter but why keep coming back to him why keep reviving him why be so hesitant to let him go and this is me talking to dc writers and to fans well it's because he's more than just a versatile fighter because he's special because he challenges people he's a challenging character and he challenges them in a lasting way honestly he's so challenging i feel like after he gets revealed bruce probably doesn't even take a shit without hearing jason's voice in his head it may be coincidental but jason brings a lot of conflict to gotham without making some crazy plot i mean his existence is one that was born of conflict in the beginning it was just some guy who stole his ties but then i know that dick wasn't told a lot of the time that jason even existed and that really as a start as an introduction to his, his i call him his older brother is just well, already one born of conflict and then it's like oh he's the darker robin he's the one who might kill he maybe he killed felipe or whatever and then we get jason's death and all the angst with that and then tim and tim replacing him and tim even coming into the picture in the first place and then we get jason coming back and then jason trying to kill everybody and jason going cuckoo it's so easy to create angst with it it's like if if there wasn't conflict that would be an inaccurate depiction of jason at least before he's been infiltrated uh, infiltrated integrated back into the family we've read quite a few fanfics where he has been very nice i wish dc writers would read the fanfics i'm reading because they are amazing listen just make a film with this fanfic. pay the writer you you got it solid anyways it's just beautiful it's seamless it's lovely it's great it's always interesting because it means that there's loads of room for solid smooth meaningful character development that again doesn't feel forced and so it means that these characters who are very stubborn in the way that they're written in the way that they are personality wise can finally 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 
finally move forward with their lives and change as characters and the status quo may possibly change because you can't really remove Jason from the status quo and so as long as you use him right and as long as people like him enough I'm pretty sure that we can get some really solid character development in these characters who tend to not change at all because of how impactful and how challenging he is as a character and he's also a vice i suppose for the fans i think there's a specific phrase for that an audience surrogate refers to a character or a narrative device that allows the audience to experience the story through their eyes because he is saying the question the argument we all have when reading the comics or not we all definitely not we all but a lot of us have it's like why do you not just kill why don't you just get rid of of the problems permanently you know why <laughs> why, are we, why, are we, why are we not why are we not just wiping the floor clean and him being the voice for the fans also allows us i suppose to argue with the characters for the writers themselves to challenge their own points of views and think about why and make up reasons and and develop the characters more and just focus on explaining to the fans why they should still read these comics why they should still love these comics what their favorite characters are actually thinking you know maybe it's time for us to permanently get rid of these villains or at the very least for us to i don't know put them in a permanent prison that they can't escape something like that i think that sounds good that sounds good maybe oh but the thing is him being a versatile fighter and him being a challenging character it's not even unique to gotham i mean even in gotham there are unique fighters not in the same way but you know still versatile and then being a challenging character is amazing but you could equally say that dick is the challenging character in that situation or bruce is well tim is even though they don't serve the purpose of being the challenging character the same way jason does but they could be considered to be the challenging character which makes us question whether he is actually special do you know what i mean like is he actually the masterpiece that we're saying is he not just a versatile fighter and a challenging character just another one of the challenging characters that exist in the world well obviously i don't think he is in fact i still argue he is one of the best challenging character and versatile fighters that they have in dc that i've ever seen and why is that because of this last major characteristic he is way too complex. Jason Todd, too complex. <laughs> to the point where it is like I'm being overfed. And that is a good thing. That's what makes a masterpiece. When I'm talking about his complexity, I'm not talking about how he makes the fans want to parent him and bed him all at the same time. I'm talking about how he makes the writers <laughs> want to parent him and bed him all at the same time. To the point where it's like, he just is a thing that exists and he cannot be stopped <laughs> in, in a sense, I'll, I'll explain. First, we start with him being a villain. It's counterintuitive, it's accidental, but they've made him snappy. They made him angry, they made him unreasonable, stubborn. They made him cross every line imaginable, putting a bomb underneath Bruce's car. When Bloodhaven explodes into flames, Bruce wants to go back and save him. And Jason's like, uh, you lost two Robins and two boys in one night. Wouldn't that be ironic? You know, just being a dick and just absolutely being willing to do almost anything to prove a point when he could have just gone home and spoke to them. He's annoying. He's a great villain and he's kind of like that i can't lie you can't listen he had a vibe if you watched under the red hood movie you don't know you don't know what i'm talking about he had a vibe and that vibe i think is the writers expressing how they feel about him not even just hot just cool you know cool that smooth coolness that he had that has so much reason for doing what he does so much skill naturally that doesn't have to be faked it's it's a natural thing you even we know why he's skilled like we fuck, we saw why he's skilled and why he can you know pick at batman's little uh defenses that's the word and he has enough drive to do it so he's an amazing villain makes sense he's a great villain but the thing is that's what i'm saying he's not just been a villain he's also been an anti-hero he's a flawed anti-hero he's weird but traumatized he has attachment issues he's had money issues he's had abandonment issues he feels like he has to live up to expectations that aren't his expectations to live up to and through all of that he 
becomes this kind of guy who anybody could relate to and who anybody wants to root for but also this guy who doesn't want to be the hero that's inspirational so he's more of the underdog i suppose is the word that we could use the the the, the one who we want to win but we also wouldn't want to be i suppose we, maybe we relate to him but we don't aim to be him and i think that that you know that flawed anti-hero role is perfect for jason as well it ties all of his other characteristics perfectly together if he wanted to play that role but the thing is the writers also wrote him as a hero he's a likable hero when he's a hero it's unexpected but he is interesting he's cocky when he's older he's funny he's polite when he's younger very studious very very caring, very sweet, very determined to do what's right. He's relatable by having his existential crises, but that doesn't hinder his morals because he always takes care of children and he makes sure that to get the drugs off the street and he'll do whatever he has to do to dirty his own hands to get the justice he deserves and the, the justice that everyone in Gotham deserves. He's more normal than the other Robins as well, whereas, you know, Dick is like this Olympic level gymnast, Tim is this super genius Damien is this prince from the assassins and the bat and Stephanie and him are the more relatable of the two and he is definitely much more mainstream than she is even though I love Stephanie Brown he's the most iconic down-to-earth relatable Robin this isn't entirely fun and definitely some canon he likes to read he likes to cook he is competent in both my head canon is that he is very very clean and he is the underdog of an underdog we love that and he just wants to make sure that the world is safer for anybody no matter what and so he'll sacrifice his life like i said to do that and so he's a very likable hero he's very sweet and very inspirational as a hero and so jason is a work of outstanding artistry skill and workmanship and this is why he is a versatile fighter he is a challenging character and he is way too complex to the point where where no matter what kind of role you play him as, he will serve it too well. He will serve it to the best of his ability. He is outstanding as a villain. He is outstanding as an anti-hero and he is outstanding as a hero. Hence why I call him a masterpiece. Because as a character, I mean, accidentally, they made him perfect they made him adaptable and they made him useful in any story he would be in or did they well i'm biased i do want to acknowledge that i am a biased person and i am a really big fan of jason todd i love the character i love him i i just watched the movie i was sent down a rabbit hole i am in love with the character so of course i'm biased everyone's biased and there are people biased against him and the people who are biased against him often are biased against him because the writers themselves can't decide what character they want him to be i mean some writers will write him as villain some will and as an anti some as a hero and so a lot of fans will not like him because they see him as a villain but then other fans will be like oh but he's an anti-hero and other fans will be like oh he's a hero what are you talking about why are you just comparing him like that and so people are just all disconnected and biased depending on which version they've seen the most or they've liked the best boring goody jason didn't sell because he was a dick clone he was a clone of dick grayson there was nothing new nothing special people just wanted dick back at that point and villain killer jason clearly didn't work as well because they retconned him and brought him back alive after the under the red hood arc so ultimately, until we get a more definitive version of his character or personality, he is an amazing character, but he will be stuck in limbo and so it's kind of hard to judge how everyone will see him or how to see him when he's still kind of in this draft stage in this stage of like oh i love these drafts drawings you've made but i don't actually know what the final design is so even though it looks amazing and the building blocks here are just amazing masterfully done and you've published them you still need to kind of decide what it is before i can just say yeah it's a masterpiece i mean he is a master 
masterpiece, but who is he? <laughs> Which is why I recommend some kind of campaign. I, I know the voting kind of sucked, maybe because people just didn't like him or something. And I don't think that DC alone deciding works either because he died the first time because of the voting and then he died the second time because DC writers decided to kill him. Both times he came back, so I don't know about that. I feel like if they just decide again or we vote again, it's just going to be a cycle of him dying and coming back over and over and over and over again. So I think we should collaborate instead. I think we should figure something out instead. Some kind of contest where people submitted story ideas, I think, to kind of embed Jason's character into the story of canon, of Batman canon, permanently so that he is one role. He plays one of the three roles permanently. That would be some way for both DC writers and the fans to kind of have a decision and have an input so that we can land right in the middle and actually be happy with him staying alive in the story not to corrupt anybody but i think if he was an anti-hero or a hero it'd be much better i don't want him as a villain i he served his role as a villain i think it was great i think it made sense this is anxiousness or crisis he was going through his teenagehood he needed that it's dangerous it's bad but he went through so so much i mean could you really blame i mean you can blame him for everything he did but at the same time he went through a lot he was he was what he's now when he came back he's like what 18 19 like give him a second okay man is going through it okay that's what i'm saying yeah so i think I'm absolutely keep him as an anti-hero or a hero and once we pick one i can absolutely say for certainty no matter what anybody else says that jason as a character who will be a character he'll be an actual confirmed proper character by then is an accidental masterpiece you want to do one thing then subscribe otherwise you know do something else like checking out my videos in the bad family playlist or letting me know why you agree that jason is an accidental masterpiece then I say goodbye, Chan Yong, Chan Yong, Chase the Dude, Chase the Dude. They'll do you, they'll decide, we'll make a decision eventually. Let's take him out of limbo, we can do this. Maybe I'll email DC. Oh, that rhymed. Okay. Chan Yong. I love Chase the Dude. I love him. I love him so much. I just, I just needed to say that before I ended the video. Nobody's done again.